The Alien Franchise. Seven films with an eighth on the way about what would happen if a couple bad aliens got on a ship over and over again. How would humanity respond to being knocked off the top of the food chain by sleek, oily monsters? The answer, not well. They would die a lot. Enter the Xenomorph, a tall beetle from another planet with really, really long lips. This thing is literally walking death. It has claws, it has two sets of razor sharp teeth, it has like 50 stealth, it has a stabby tail, it can walk on ceilings, and here's the kicker, it has acid blood, so even if you manage to hurt it, which you won't, it can kill you just by bleeding. This can get confusing, so let's take a look at your standard xenomorph life cycle. We begin with the egg, laid by an alien queen. The egg contains the most alpha horseshoe crab in the universe. Known as the face hugger, this creature begins its life by hugging the nearest face and pushing a nasty, nasty tube down its host's throat. Through that tube comes a teeny little egg, and the face hugger detaches to die. In a few hours, the egg will hatch into a young xenomorph, which will explode through the host's stomach and immediately begin to hunt humans. The young xenomorph sheds its skin and grows into a nightmare beast, completing the beautiful circle of life. Now, the xenomorph shows up in every film, encountering groups of humans and tearing them up like Thanksgiving turkeys. Just unfair, brutal massacres. Every film is a massacre. In Alien 1, a group of space truckers discovers an abandoned ship filled with eggs. One of the dudes is a big fan of eggs, so he brings back a specimen attached to his face. Over the course of a day, the alien kills just about everyone. Except for Warrant Officer Ellen Ripley and her cat Jonesy. Jonesy, of course, is clearly playing both sides of this war. In the battle between alien and human, Jonesy is sweet, not picking a side and just watching stuff happen. Ripley and the cat blast the alien into space and then go into cryo sleep to get ready for aliens. Aliens, Ripley's back 57 years Years later, with her, a small army of disposable space marines. Ripley hops into a mech suit, kicks some alien ass, and gains a surrogate family in the process. She meets the alien queen, long may she reign. Ripley blasts her into space, and then back into cryosleep she goes. Alien cubed, Ripley's new family dies immediately. She goes to prison, fights a dog, and ultimately kills herself to save humanity. The villain at the root of Alien isn't the big beetle killing machines, it's big business. The Wayland Yudani Corporation, which is like if BP merged with Google and was run by mercenaries, continuously tries to capture and weaponize the aliens. We don't have time for that anti-corporate message though because we've got four more movies to go. Alien Resurrection. They clone Ripley 250 years later and try to mix her with an alien. It doesn't work as a movie. Alien vs. Predator. Alien fights Predator. Alien vs. Predator 2. A different alien fights a different Predator. Prometheus. Guess what? You saw it coming from a mile away. Big pasty statue boys are behind everything. They created the aliens and humanity and now they want to destroy it all, I think. Yeah, I don't know. They throw some dots into a waterfall and there's a live squid birth. I passed out. I'm sure we'll get answers in Prometheus Cubed. TLDW, the circle of life is a beautiful thing unless it somehow involves a crab humping your face.